At the same time, I want to take a look at the U.S. economy. How exactly are things going? Not just for you, but how is it going to affect the overall election? So we have a lot of weird indicators. You could look at things a couple of different ways. First and foremost is probably this. Let's put this up there. Inflation is going to be so massively determinative in the election and how people feel about where things are going. As you guys can see from the chart in front of you, technical, the CPI inflation, which peaked at over 9% in mid 2022, seems to be down. But it is down to what? Somewhere around 3.5 or so percent. And I think the big question, though, is that even though it may be down, you know, to 3 or 4 percent, depending on the month and things ticking up in December, it's still a hell of a lot higher even in the monthly and or annual rate than where it was back in 2020. We've had over 20 percent inflation or so that consumers have experienced in a very, very short period of time, which is part of what is affecting the overall shock. At the same time, though, if you look at Americans' pocket pocketbooks, despite the fact that inflation is high, we do seem to be in a weird conundrum. Let's put this up there. This actually just came out. A new survey, which is called the Axios Vibes Poll, which mm-hmm. I love, uh, finds, <laughs> oh, I don't know, I actually you like it, it? it kind of nails it. Okay. It says mm-hmm. Americans are actually pretty happy with their finances. So this is despite the fact that consumer sentiment is very weak. People uh, in general are unhappy with the overall economy. But then if you ask them, how do you feel about their overall prospects? They're like, yeah, I actually feel good about it. They say 63% rate their current financial situation as being good. 19% actually say, Say, quote, it's very good. Neither number is very low. They're actually in line with the average result right now for the last 20 times that Harris, Harvard Harris has asked um, this poll and nationally representative of you know, thousands of people. They say 66% actually think 2024 is going to be better than 2023, and 85% say that they will change our financial personal situation for the better. So Crystal, I mean, you could put those two things together. I'm not quite sure. I could see it, like I said, a lot of different ways. Um, We've got the inflation, which is ticking up. People are still pissed off about the grocery store, about gas, about the fact that they're spending more on personal household goods than they used to. But then in their personal lives, they seem to be kind of happy. I don't really know what to do with that. But it it makes it so that the question that the economy is 100% going to be bad for Joe Biden, it doesn't, you know, the, the data doesn't bear that out to make it a foregone conclusion. There's enough like sticky and noise stuff within there yeah. that it actually is more up in the air than I would have expected. Especially when you consider that I think the vibes were probably, you know, judging by people's self-reported sense of the economy and how they were feeling and also the real numbers about inflation, they were worse around the midterms. Way worse. And we really thought, and a lot of analysts really thought, that was going to be the determining factor mm-hmm. for people casting ballots, and it wasn't. So I think there's two questions. Number one is how are people actually feeling in their lives on a micro sense, like day to day? Because there's, uh, you know, do I feel like I can pay the bills today and I'm okay today? And do I feel a sense of comfort about the future? Or do I feel a lot of precarity and a lot of fear for the future? Because I suspect that's a lot of what's going on and why we get these like counter indications of how people are actually doing. Um, And then you also have the question of, Is it still the economy stupid when it comes to politics? Yeah, good question. And, you know, as someone with sort of like democratic socialist leanings that looks a lot at class and material analysis, I'm not sure that that's the case in American politics as much as it used to be. And the reason is because no one has any confidence that any of these politicians are going to do anything for them. So it's like, why vote on material interests when the only thing I really expect to get out of them is to like, you know, signal on whatever cultural fights that I care most about. And so that's the way that I'm going to think about politics. And that's the way I'm going to cast my ballot. I think that's increasingly the case in American politics. And you can see that in the fact that there's, this is something um, that Matt Carp has tracked really closely. Mm. There isn't really a class realignment If you look, working class voters are almost split 50-50 between the two parties. There's a class de-alignment in American politics where perhaps the economy, which should be the center of a lot of concerns and traditionally is the center of a lot of concerns in terms of translating into voting preferences, just isn't the king that it used to be. It's not the king that it used to be. 2022 was the real one where, you know, abortion activated so many voters and such with such passion, willing to override the interests. On top of that, you had Trump, like cult of personality issues both ways that stemmed and, and had their issue. If we take, you know, just a look though, I, I think what we could say this, it it is 
determinative in some respects, but it's not you know as predictive as it once was. It used to be that you know if there was a bad election, a bad economy, there was just no question about what the economic wins are. So on that front, Biden has to hope for a better economy if he wants to continue these fights on stop the steal, abortion, and all of that. And Look, as I said too, there's some leading indicators going Biden's way. Let's put this up there. The U.S. consumer actually propelled the economy forward in 2023. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal that actually just happened yesterday. They say how American shoppers silenced doubters. The Commerce Department said retails were, uh, retail rose actually by 0.6% in December, putting them 5.6% higher than a year earlier, way stronger than a lot of economists had predicted. Previously, they had predicted not only recession, which technically we were in a recession, Session, but whatever. The whole point is like, are people spending money or not? And that on the consumer question, it seemed that consumer sentiment, while it remained low in terms of satisfaction, consumer spending remained high and high enough that actually we saw a record number for the S&P 500 at the end of 2023. And you put the, together with that a couple of other things like, what can we expect? Rate cuts? We can expect a rate cut to come sometime. That means that, let's say rates drop to 4, 5, 4.5 or so percent. There's two and a half years of locked up capital, people who are ready to go. I was just reading this morning from the journal. There's some $8 trillion of consumer and institutional money in money market funds because they're paying such high interest rates. Well, if you have an interest rate cut, then the prospect of actually spending that, uh, you know, that cash, some $8 trillion bucks, either in housing or in investing in business, whatever, something that you think is going to get a better return than when you're currently at basically completely safe in a money market. You could see that. Polling-wise, too, things are all over the place. So we have this. Let's put it up there. Just the latest YouGov poll. This is the first one we've actually seen in a while, which shows Biden actually beating Trump. It says Biden at 40 percent, Trump at 38. This is in the national. And 2 percent is right around where you need to be if you actually want to pull off an electoral college victory for the Democrats. If you add in RFK Jr. there, it's Biden 34, Trump 33, Kennedy 17. Interesting to see that Kennedy actually appears to be pulling a decent amount you know, from both Pretty sides, equally. Mm -hmm. quite equally, 7% from Trump and 6% from Biden. This is, you know, in this poll, but, you know, relatively kind of consistent. But you have to also remember that this is an electoral college. And if we look at the electoral college and we see some of the must win states or the, the ones that if Biden wants to recreate his win from last time, things aren't nearly looking as good. So let's put this up there. You know, we have Georgia here, for example, in the state of Georgia, Trump is leading Biden by some, you know, 45 to 37 percent. It said that 20 percent of, of Georgians critically, though, were not re yet ready to support either candidate as things are shifting in that direction. So with a large number of undecided voters, I guess it shows us a couple of things. Trump may be leading right now, but he still very much could, you know, piss enough Georgians off that they would come out and vote for him, saving Biden. Biden did barely win the election last time, but the special elections and Georgia politics since then have definitely trended in a non-Trump direction. If you zoom that out, it's just funny because I really could make the case either way. I yeah, could I could I easily sit here and make the case for Biden. I could easily sit here and make the case for Trump, which just makes me convinced that it's not only unknown, but it's a lot closer than I think either side wants it to be. Not to mention the, just the chaos factor yeah, of not knowing exactly. what's going to happen between now and Election Day. Like, we had no idea October 7th was going to happen. We had no idea, you know, the way that Israel would respond in this just absolutely brutal fashion, the way that would become a real center of gravity, especially in uh, politics on the Democratic side, where the Democratic base is very much at odds with Joe Biden and young voters disgusted with his response there. Um, but we did have another election result. You know, this is where I was, because I always look at these polls, you know, the Georgia poll, I'm like, right. oh my God, Joe Biden is completely toast. Like this mm -hmm. old man who can't formulate a sentence that is like, you know, lost any sort of potential moral high ground that he may have had at one time. How could he possibly beat anyone, let alone Donald Trump, who's a very skilled, charismatic performer? And then I see a result like this out of Florida, where Democrats just flipped a Florida State House seat in a special election. Um, it was a seat that, now listen, this, this cuts both ways, okay, because on the one hand, Joe Biden did win this seat by five points. On the other hand, Ron DeSantis had won this seat by 12 points. So I guess you can say it's kind of a swing district, yes. and Democrats just flipped it. In spite of the fact that uh, I was looking at some of the online analysis, there was not a strong Democratic, registered Democrat turnout. So early in the day, all the Democratic, like, 
polling analysts and data mm. gurus were freaking out, like, oh, Republicans definitely just won this seat. But when the results came in, I guess because of strong independent performance showing up for the Democrats, they were able to pull it off. And, you know, this is consistent with the trend that we have seen since the midterms of Democrats outperforming in almost every special election that's occurred. So on the politics of it, I do think, you know, I could, I'm like you, Sagar, I, it depends on the day and what data point I'm looking at. I can see it happening either direction. Just to go back quickly to, to the economy and trying mm -hmm. to like sort through how people are feeling, like, I want to be really clear. I think the macro picture for Americans in this economy is incredibly dire. Prices have gone up a lot. Wages have not gone up a lot. Um, you have massive inequality continuing and becoming you know, further exacerbated. You have, critically, the building blocks of middle class life, the things that make people feel like, I'm going to be OK for the future. And you know what? My kids are probably going to be OK for the future. We're talking housing, health care, and education, all three wildly, insanely unaffordable and have been skyrocketing in price for years. The things that previous generations were able to accomplish, the milestones they were able to achieve at earlier points in their life, millennials and now Gen Z are way behind in being able to achieve those milestones. In the big picture, America is going backwards in terms of like yes. basic levels of economic achievement, prosperity, and lack of precarity, which I think is a really important um, term. So I don't want anybody to like think that I'm saying, oh, actually, the economy is great, and that's why Joe Biden's going to get reelected. I don't think that is accurate at all. I just think that there is so much hopelessness around any of these politicians really delivering that people are evaluating their choices in the election through a different lens than perhaps they did in the past. Very possible. Like you said, I mean, maybe they've, they've given up. I agree completely. I mean, nobody should mistake this as us being like, yeah, the economy's great. No, structurally, there's massive problems. People are very aware of them. Things you're swimming against the tide in many respects, you know, whenever you're younger and the deck is stacked uh, in various different ways, regardless of whether you're college educated or non college educated, as we continue to like look for that. But as you said, people are also short term creatures in the way that they think and they evaluate. And as 2022 really did show us, though, that you can be materially really suffering and you will still vote sometimes in a different direction if you don't agree with another party. That's a real X factor uh, that comes in here. So, you know, the whole point of this is just to show you and prepare since the Republican primary is effectively over now at this point to just say like, okay, what is actually going to impact this election? And we want to give everybody as, you know, round of a picture as we can to try and make sense of things because 2022 definitely caught me by surprise. You know, I think it did certainly a lot of people. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.